What's up guys? Uh, my name is Trevor Steele. This is Troy. So we're gonna go over a couple of Troy's blown launches. He blew three launches this morning. The conditions weren't optimal. He was running uphill at a road. It, I mean, it wasn't perfect conditions for him to do it. And he also hasn't flown much in like over a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So it was like first time flying, rough conditions, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so we're gonna go <laughs> over it. We believe in talking about our mistakes so we can learn from them. Yes, so let's take a look here at video number one. So Troy goes, he inflates the glider, inflates the glider, inflates the glider. He was just a little too slow to get on that gas and pulled quite a bit of brake. Then you could see he's just running, 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 stuffing as much brake as he can hold, killing all of the speed of that glider, jumps the ditch, and falls Oof. down and doesn't get up. So what <laughs> happened? Well, there's a couple things we can learn from this video. The first thing I'll mention is the delay of getting onto the throttle. If the glider doesn't come up perfectly straight, oftentimes people are a little hesitant to want to get onto the throttle because they want to correct it first, then get into the throttle. A little trick, if you get into that throttle and start to speed up, you can actually pull more brake. Because if you're only running five miles an hour and pull three feet of brake, chances of you stalling it is much higher. But if you're running eight miles an hour, 10 miles an hour, well, you can pull quite a bit more brake before the glider stalls. So I usually get into that power, even if the glider doesn't come up perfectly straight, really stare at the glider, keep my eyes on that glider so I make sure I don't take a collapse and don't stall it. And then I can get a little heavier into the brake to correct it and re-accelerate after I make the correction. So you correct the glider and then it's important to get your hands back up. You kind of kept your hands down, which is a tough balance because you gotta keep the hands down enough so you don't fall onto your face, but also get them up enough so you can re-accelerate the glider main get to airspeed pull brakes get into the sky uh, Troy in this case leaning a little bit forward to try and keep yourself um, try and hold yourself up you should lean back uh, I think what the problem was is I actually I noticed this I had my my what's called my my straps just a little bit too tight than I usually mm, have them okay so if I would have loosened those up just a tad bit, I would have been able to stand up a little bit more because I was a little well, bit- Well, you can just lean back. So stare up at the glider. Because mm -hmm. if you look straight up, it you makes lean you lean back. So True. I like to look straight up at the start to initiate that backwards lean. And then I'm not running. I don't actually run. I only run for the first 10, 15 oh, me too. steps. Yeah, I do that. Once you're on that power, I'm just skipping off the ground, letting the motor push me. No, yeah, that's what I did too. Which is really nice, because then you don't have, it's not like, when you go out to launch, you're not running for 50 to 100, you're not sprinting for 50 to 100 yards. You're running for 15, and you can't. And even, then your feet are just gliding across the ground for another 20. And you can't even really run, because like, if you run, you're going to be leaning forward. Yeah, if you're sprinting forward, the difference in thrust is like 80 pounds, don't quote me on that, but I heard that, of leaning forward to leaning back. Mind you, you only have like 150 pounds, 160 pounds of thrust. So like half your thrust is killed if you're leaning forward versus leaning back. So you're running twice as far. Oh yeah. And it's pushing you into the ground. Then another thing that you did, uh, you held a lot of brake for a long time, mm -hmm. which really kills all the lift because you're using all of that speed and that lift to keep you from falling into your face trying to get up but it doesn't have enough to actually get you up. Mm -hmm. you gotta get those hands back up, accelerate to the airspeed you need, then pull brake to actually get into the sky. Mm -hmm. And on that one, you jump the ditch trying to save it. My thing, if I know I'm not gonna make it, like running at the road, if I knew I wasn't gonna make it by the road, and I knew I wasn't gonna make it by the, the, the dune, I would never try and go over an obstacle or through an obstacle to get into the air, I would stop. I would. <laughs> I would just stop. Oh, and if you if you can't just stop fast enough, I just I would just sit down because with the flat top you can mm. smack it into the ground. It's not gonna care. Mm. Because I don't want to jump over the ditch, and then hit really hard on the other side mm. and hurt myself, or run into the road and get hit by a car or something. Run through you know bushes and hit the bushes. I don't, I don't want to do that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I stop before I hit an obstacle. Mm -hmm. If I know I'm not gonna make it. Okay, let's look at video number two here. Uh, this launch, uh, beautiful inflation. You started to correct it. Problem is you got really heavy into the brakes, non, not onto the throttle. You can notice you're really running really, really, really slow. Oh, like yeah. Look how slow you're going. You're going like three miles an hour. So any brake correction and you're going to stall it, you probably could have saved it from there if that's you just full sent it. Yeah. Uh, but that's okay. That's just get into that power. I usually get into it like right there. Right as that oh, glider sure. is starting to crest the top, I'm full power running as fast as I can. Because mm -hmm. if you need to make a correction like this, 
you want as much speed as possible so you can get into the brakes as you need to get into the brakes. Yeah, the problem with this launch is I hesitated. That's you hesitated. Thing. Mm -hmm. Big thing with forward launches, probably the biggest piece of advice for forward launches, you gotta fully freaking commit. Mm -hmm. It's 110%, it is not even 100%. Mm -hmm. As if you just give it like, all right, I'll try, and if it doesn't come up right, I'll stop. You're never gonna get a launch like that. It's every dang piece of effort that you got, you gotta give it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll show at the end of this video my, or a different video. I, I did a downwind, downwind launch on a 4XS, which is 16 meters. Only reason I got it is because I gave every dang thing I had. I was like, I'm gonna run till I freaking fall over, mm -hmm. and I made it. That was so. the other video when I uh, we didn't get it on video, but uh, when I did my launch on when we did the the, the side by side, yep, wingtip, uh, not the wingtips, the uh, foot, foot drags down the water. Yeah, I actually. Uh, the wind was very funky that day and like I had to get up and I was like I'm just gonna full scent it So I put every single piece of effort into it and I just didn't stop didn't hesitate All I thought was just get off the ground get off the ground get off the ground and I just ran 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 and I just Made it. You, it just, you just gotta make it happen. Uh -huh. There there has to be a full level of commitment for a forward mm -hmm. launch for Half sure. commitment you won't get it and mm -hmm. there's got to be the technique, but I, you know more often than not it's you commitment. can save Bad technique with enough effort. Mm -hmm. You should have good technique. There are a few things you really want to watch for on a forward launch. One, you don't want to stall it. Again, if you're going to not stall it, you got to run fast enough. So you usually use power to speed up because you're going to have to make a brake correction or something like that. And that usually stalls it like this video. Or two, you take a collapse. I usually have a good prevention of collapse by doing enough training at the on the ground, practicing mm -hmm. collapses, as well as watching the glider. If you visually are watching that glider as well as you know all the other pieces, you tend to catch things faster if you're staring at it. So I'm usually looking at that glider, looking at that glider, look right, look left, look up. I'm just keeping contact on that glider as much as possible. And then oscillations, you wanna make sure that glider takes off in a straight line. All of these things you really learn on the ground with lots and lots of practice. With that, with that, when you learn that, uh, what's called the, the hand uh, movement, the muscle memory. Muscle memory, memory. muscle yeah. memory. The biggest thing for, the biggest thing for learning forward launches is run and jumps. Run and jumps are a big one because run and jumps, you learn stalls, preventing collapses, loading and unloading the glider, and direction control. Mm -hmm. All the pieces. Because when you accelerate and you jump and you land, well, you're full break. So you learn how, what that stall feels like. Mm -hmm. You learn to look at that glider. Then it overshoots you if you show your hands up. So you know what it feels like as the glider starts to overfly you. You have to keep the glider perfectly straight in order to do the run and jump. All those pieces. Now, word inflations always help too because you also learn how to keep up, how to get the glider straight up above your head every single time. It but is good to get forward inflations. However, Slow with down. with shifty and changey wind, you can never 100% guarantee that the glider is going to come up straight unless you're for sure under the wind. Yeah, true. So like in our case, we couldn't launch 100% into the wind mm -hmm. because we would have been running at a really awkward angle. But as soon as the glider starts to come up, we can correct and change its direction to kind of cater to the slight shift that we have on it. For sure. For right? Sure. Mm -hmm. So if we're just slightly crooked to the wind, it's going to come up a little crooked. Well, we can correct that and then make it go the direction that we're running with practice. There we go. All right, let's look at this third one. Uh, you're running, you're running, you're running, you're running. The glider inflation was beautiful. You waited a little too long to get into that throttle. You almost stalled it. You can see mm -hmm. right here. Oh, it's yeah. like bouncing off oh, that yeah. stall line right there. Oh, you save it because you were you were accelerating. You ran, you ran, you ran. Again, the same thing as the other launch. You just were holding so much brake it couldn't accelerate. Mm -hmm. And you ran over the road and, and over the ditch and onto and a fence. fence. So Farm just like... Ride. It's like I mentioned, I, I stopped before I reach an obstacle like that. I would have stopped right here. I would have just held full brakes and then just stopped my feet and let the glider overfly me. Okay. Hold, full brakes because if you dump your hands up, you're probably going to fall mm -hmm. down. I so was also looking across the road and I was like, there's no car. There were no cars, so, so it wasn't risky in that sense. I yeah. just, it, it's one of those things. I don't like yeah, to run through obstacles. Like we had a guy uh, run through those bushes. And I was like, almost there and almost not there. And I probably would have tried to run through the bushes, but it's like one of those things like, okay, if there's an obstacle that you're unsure you're going to clear, just don't. Yeah, for sure. Just don't. It's it's a risk. So, all right, guys. Well, those are the three videos. A little bit of advice on some forward launches. Looking at our mistakes, mm -hmm. we, we like to look and learn. So, if you guys want to learn how to fly, check us out at flyflattop.com. We run a 10-day paramotor training course down in Corpus Christi, Texas, where we teach you exactly how to fly that paramotor through repetition, practice, and hours and hours and hours of doing the same thing over again.
Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. yeah, actually, no. it's all about building muscle memory, and that comes through practice. So that's what we do down at Super Training. Uh, if you want to learn more, go to flyflattop.com or call me, this phone number right here, at 800-707-2525. I will happily answer every question that you have. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Take care.